Hi, this is Graham from Genoms Astro. If you watch my channel, you'll know I'm a big fan of this scope, the Celestron C90 Maxitoff. You'll also have seen that recently I've picked up a bigger brother, the Skywatcher Skymax 127. In this video, I'm going to compare the two scopes. Firstly, I'm going to look at their specifications so you know what you get when you order each of these packages. And secondly, I'm going to try to make a comparison of their optical performance. Okay, so let's start with aperture, most important characteristic of a telescope. So the clue's in the name, Skymax 127, 127mm 5 inch uh, mirror, and the C90 90mm, which is around about 3.5 inches. But as we've seen, um, the Skymax effective aperture is a bit lower than advertised, it operates at around about 120mm. So a fair comparison is to say that this is a 120mm scope. And this is a 90 millimeter scope. In terms of focal length, there's uh, 1500 millimeters. There's a meter and a half of focal length inside the SkyMax, and a little bit less, 1250 for the C90. Now, the effect of that is that this design, the SkyMax design, is operating at just under f12, and the Celestron at just under f14. So this is closer to a classic uh, Maxitoff focal ratio and we may see the effect of that in some of the images. When you buy either of these scopes you come with a range of accessories so the Skymax comes with uh, two eyepieces, a 10mm and a 25mm and I'd say they're actually not too bad and the C90 comes with a single 32mm plossel which is quite a heavier construction than, than these two if that counts for anything there's more glass in there I'd say the scopes uh, both have finder scopes attached so the Skymax has a red dot finder which is, is very effective and the C90 has an optical finder which is an 8x21 which really, I'd say, is pretty well useless. You want to change that. So, the first thing you're going to want to do with the C90 is to put that in the bin and put something like a red dot finder onto it or an optical finder of a decent aperture. Both of these scopes have some means of adjusting the angle of viewing. So, the 127 comes with a 90 millimeter uh, mirror diagonal, pretty lightweight, but get you started whereas the C90 has a 45mm erecting prism. Now these things, this probably reflects the fact that this scope is sold as a spotting scope as well as uh, an astronomical telescope. And really I wouldn't advise using this very much for astro targets because the prism arrangements in one of these can introduce some strange artifacts and generally they're not, not hugely popular for nighttime viewing. If we look around the back, both of these scopes are supplied um, with the intention that you use one and a quarter inch accessories. Not really much point using uh, trying to fit two inch accessories onto either of these scopes. Uh, so they've got 1.25 millimeter visual back and it's basically the same unit. Each of the scopes has a T-thread on the back of the visual back so you could thread for example, a digital SLR with a T-ring straight onto the back and get a very solid fitting. So that's a good thing. Um, perhaps not so good is that both of them have just got a couple of uh, screws with which to grip your eyepiece. So uh, that, um, that may be an area to improve on if you uh, look to spec up your uh, scope a little bit. In terms of mountings, the Skymax has a uh, Vixen dovetail bar, nice green paint finish these days, and C90 has the same, just a, a smaller unit, a shorter unit, but perfectly adequate. What else? Um, well, as you've seen recently, I think Skywatcher have started to bundle a rather nice padded bag with the 127, which has some pockets and some places to store your accessories and a nice carry handle which you can 
see there. Whereas the C90 comes with a little rucksack. Weight. Now, this one tip the scales at around three kilos, whereas the C90 is about 2.2. So neither of these are heavy scopes. Uh, the Skymax feels quite a lot bigger, which is what you expect because it is, but still both very grab and go. And then finally, price. So currently in the UK, uh, the 127 Skymax uh, is retailing for around £250, whereas the C90 is around about £170. So that's the comparison. See the two scopes. Let's see how they perform optically. So how are we going to compare the two scopes optically? Well, because these are both Maxitov scopes, and because it doesn't really get dark at this time of the year, I've decided to do a back-to-back -back test um, using a planetary target. So in this case, I've got the C90, I'm gonna put it on an equatorial mount. We're gonna use uh, an ASI-120 camera and a two times Barlow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot some video of the planet, and then we're gonna immediately swap out one optical tube for the other one. So in this case I'm then going to fit the, uh, the Skymax and then we're going to do that a few times um, and then offline we'll process the images and we'll try to see if we can compare the quality of the planetary image. So in theory there's very little changing between the conditions for one telescope to the other even though obviously atmospheric seeing can vary second to second but hopefully it's a, uh, it's a fair test. Okay, so this is my first attempt uh, of many. So on the top we've got the 127 video and below we've got uh, the output from the camera on the Celestron C90. So um, first thing to note, I guess, is that the planet is low in the sky from the UK. We're not using any um, dispersion correctors so this is a fairly fuzzy view but these two videos taken uh, a few minutes apart and you can get an idea of uh, the sort of size the image scale and maybe some of the detail you can see um, for the two scopes so at this point there we can't see the the great red spot I don't think but we can see um, the equatorial bands uh, one more prominent than the other and um, we'll process the images and see if we can make a comparison. Okay, so I've put the two videos through uh, Registax and I've applied the same stacking and wavelets to both. So everything as far as I can um, control is the same. Um, general comparisons, well, the image scale, of course, is, is bigger the detail, as far as I'm concerned, I've, I've done a few videos on this first um, first evening and processed each one and looked at the difference between the images and I'd say there really isn't a huge amount of difference. Um, there's perhaps a little bit more detail in the 127's image as perhaps you might expect but it's not hugely um, different from that from the smaller Mac. Okay, fast forward a few weeks. Uh, in between, I've had several um, attempts to capture both of the planets and the weather and um, some trees and my neighbour's house have got in the way, so I haven't been able to get a direct comparison. So uh, this has been the next opportunity and this time we can see the great red spot. So we're seeing a different view of the planet and um, it's in a slightly different part of the sky for me and the sky is a bit darker, the backdrop is a bit darker, so perhaps the contrast is a little bit better. But these two videos taken just a few minutes apart, I think you can see on the top, the 127 is showing perhaps slightly more detail um, on the video, and we'll see how that compares when we process both of these videos through Registax. And here's the result. So. For my money, I'd say that the 127 image is quite a lot uh, better than the C90's image here. We've got 
more detail in the um, equatorial bands. We've got better contrast for the great red spot. Um, there are three moons captured in both images. I think they are um, Europa, Ganymede and then Io over on the right. But overall, this the 127 has captured a better image than the C90, but not by a huge amount. Okay, that's it. Hopefully the comparison has been useful, if perhaps not quite as conclusive as I was expecting. I think we've seen that both of the Macs can produce good images of Jupiter, although at the moment the conditions aren't ideal. I'll comp continue to compare uh, these two scopes and I'll post some more comparison videos uh, moving on to other types of objects and we'll see how they compare in the long term. So thanks for watching, hopefully it's been useful and if you haven't already please subscribe to the Genoms Astro channel for more astro videos. I wish you clear skies.